Today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, we'll preview the Tigers game against the Fairfield University Stags. Get ready, fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello and welcome to the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. The Tigers are once again on the road this weekend when they travel to Fairfield, Connecticut to take on Fairfield University and the Stags. To preview the matchup, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin, and Coach First off, congratulations for clinching a spot in the CAA tournament. I know that's not your team's goal, but that is step one. It is. It is step one. You know, being 3-0 in the league uh, is a good thing, um, but obviously we got um, a big game in front of us, you know, heading up on the road against a really tough opponent. Um, you know, it's, but it's good to know our body of work so far is, is, you know, where it needs to be. You walk into Fairfield this Saturday, and this is a team that they are, to say the least, desperate. They have lost their last four games. They're 0-3 in the CAA. If they have any hopes of trying to get into the CAA tournament, they have got to beat you this week. And they're a team that has always played Towson tough. Absolutely. They're a talented team. they got you know strong goaltending, strong face-off. When you have those two positions you know, um, as a big catalyst for you, you can be successful. Um, but you know, they're a team that, again, has, has dealt with some you know, some bad losses at times and, and close losses. So they're a dangerous team. Um, and we know they'll be fired up, obviously, you know, stepping on the field on Saturday at 3 o'clock. It is kind of amazing because this was a team that was um, favored to go far last year, and they did. You guys played them tough in the, in the CAA tournament. They're 3-9, and nine and they, they bring back Colin Burke, who was one of the best offensive players in the CAA last year. He's having another good year, 21 goals, 11 assists. And then Tyler Baring, who along with Tyler Wade of the Tigers, were the two most effective goalies in the conference last year. Are you surprised at their record this season? I am. I am. You know, and I've been there. You know, you get some close losses. You know, those one-goal losses kind of drive you crazy, you know, because it can obviously, you know, help you or hurt you uh, throughout the season. Um, you know, so I am surprised at um, you know, kind of their, their lack of wins, and, but it doesn't discredit them as being a, a really good team because they are, uh, for whatever reason, it, you know, things haven't worked out as, I'm sure, as much as they thought they would or, or hoped uh, so far this season. But uh, Coach Copeland to get those guys you know, tuned up and ready to go for Saturday. Uh, and as you said, they still got you know, a lot of good players and, and Tyler Barry and, and um, Colin being, you know, two big ones for them. They're coming off a, a loss to UMass 12-8 to the week before. Lost to Drexel 13-12. to 
a Drexel team that just beat the only unbeaten team left in the country in Hofstra. So obviously they have played tough against, uh, you know, Stony Brook. They, they played tough against Rutgers. I mean, this is a team that beat Bucknell, who's having a pretty good year. So the three and nine is a little deceiving in that they're not getting blown out. Absolutely. And that's what I was kind of alluding to before is like, it's not like they, you know, just the wheels have fallen off and, and they're terrible. You know, that's why they're losing games. It's the, they're in those games. You know, it's just, I think, a player, you know, player two or three here and there that's really separating, you know, separating them from a, a win, you know, into a loss column. Uh, so, again, they're, they're talented. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, hopefully they don't put it all together <laughs> against us on Saturday. Uh, and go from there. But if they do, we know we'll be in for a battle, and it always is, you know, with those guys. As you now wind down the regular season this week and then next week against Hofstra, and that's it, then postseason begins. When you look at your team from, say, an offensive standpoint and where they are now and where they were two months ago when you opened against Mount St. Mary's, what do you see different? Uh, specifically offensively? Offensively, yes. Um, well, as we talked about, um, you know, kind of throughout the year here, you know, we, we got a lot of people contributing, a lot of people that can do good things for us. Obviously, everybody knows, you know, Drenner and Joe Sider and, and you know, Michael Lynch, but you got guys like Bolawicki and, um, you know, Conan at, at times and, and Kinnear kicking in at times, but, you know, T. Young, you know, Tyler Young doing a good job. So we're, we're pretty diverse offensively, and those guys have, have been able to come through, especially now into the CAA. Um, I feel like we're pretty comfortable in what we need to run and how we need to do it. I feel like, you know, we're as healthy as we've been uh, all year at this point where through the first half of the season we were dealing with some injuries to some offensive personnel, um, which, you know, I guess could have hurt, you know, the way they were producing on the field. And I think, um, you know, our shooting has definitely improved. Our shooting has definitely improved over the, the course of the season, specifically now into the CAA. So, um, again, it's a, it's a long year. It's a, you know, every day is a process, and you got to prepare, you know, to make yourself better. And our guys with Coach G, you know, pushing our offense, you know, have done a good job with that. And our chemistry, I think, is, is starting to really shine. You look at the, the, the overall statistics, and I know statistics are not the end-all and be-all, although lots of people think they are. Um, Towson doesn't have a lot of individual players that are way up in the rankings nationally, except for Tyler Mays and cause turnovers. From the offensive end, you know, you, you don't have anybody that, that stands out that's leader in points or assists or goals per game. Your goalies don't have outstanding numbers that they're near the top, where last year Tyler White was among, if not the best goalkeeper in the country. That kind of shows that you as a unit are playing well, and it's not an individual thing, and that's got to make you as a coach happy. Absolutely. We, we preach that every day, you know, in regards to, you know, everybody has a role. Everybody has to be accountable to that role because that role is vital for the team to be successful. So having those guys, um, you know, having our team be more balanced, you know, in regards to production, whether it be, um, you know, cause turnovers, ground balls, um, you know, the, the offensive production with goals and assists and those types of things uh, is really comforting to see because, you know, fortunately we've been success that way uh, with that. And um, like I said, everybody knows who Ryan Drenner is and, you know, think that our offense completely runs through them. And, you know, yeah, we want him to have the ball a lot and, and things do, you know, things come through there. But uh, I think we've also shown that even if he doesn't have it a lot, we've been able to be successful as well. So. We're tough, you know, I think right now we're, we're a tough matchup offensively because we do have quite a few guys that can hurt you, but, you know, those guys need to be on. And, and defensively, we're working very well. As a unit, for the most part, we need to continue to, to clean up some communication and off-ball errors at times. But, you know, playing a couple goalies throughout the year, again, I feel like everybody understands that they have a, a big piece in our success, not just the guys playing on game day, but also our scout team and, and the guys that don't step on the field knowing that what they do every day in practice to prepare for game day is crucial to our success. I would be remiss if I did not mention that Alex Woodall is within the top ten in, in face-offs, and that's certainly a change from the last <laughs> couple of years. The Tigers and the Stags are set for a 3 o'clock opening face-off. I'll have the call on TowsonTigers.com starting at 2.45 along with Hunter Lochte. The game will also be available for viewing on ESPN3. Coach, good luck. Hopefully this is your last road game for a long time. Great. Thanks, Bureau. All right.
For head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Have a great weekend, and as always, go Tigers.